Welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Teens. I'm registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, Jill Castle, with Blake and Baker at my flanks, who are going to help me make pepperoni calzones today. So the first thing we're going to do, we have some fresh dough from the deli, which uh, makes it so much easier to make a calzone or a pizza. And I'm just cutting it in half because we're gonna make two calzones. So dough is so fun to work with. Uh, I don't know, have you guys worked with dough before? Yes, Yeah. Yes. So we're just gonna um, roll this one out. Baker, I'm gonna let you do that. We're gonna roll it out into a circle, but we're gonna roll it into a flat circle, and then we're gonna fill it. It's so simple. Calzones you usually uh, would get at a pizza shop. Have you guys had calzones before? I just met. Yeah, they're really delicious. Um, the thing at, at a pizza place, you might get the real pepperoni and they're quite greasy. We're going to okay. use turkey pepperoni today. So it, we have the same flavor as regular pepperoni, we just don't have all the grease. So we've got this one rolled out. I'm going to let, and I'm just going to stretch it a little bit. I'm going to let um, Blake roll his dough out and then we're going to have you mix up the filling. So we have some mozzarella shredded cheese, you can dump that in the silver bowl. We have a little ricotta cheese, which you can dump in the bowl, and a little bit of oregano. So one of the things I love about this recipe is it is packed full of calcium, and calcium is a nutrient that all growing teens need. In fact, after the age of 13, you guys need like 1,300 milligrams a day. Do you know how much? Uh, calcium you can get in a glass of milk? How much? 300. Wow. So how many, math question, how many glasses of milk do you need to drink to get 1,300 milligrams of calcium a day? Too many. Too many. <laughs> well, you can get other, uh, you can get calcium from other sources as well, such as cheese and yogurt, uh, some dark uh, green vegetables also will give you some uh, calcium. But it's really important to get enough calcium in your diet. This recipe is one way to get it. All right, that looks good. Um, because at this time in your life, you're banking and building bones, okay? So by the time you're in your 20s, you will not be building bone anymore. You're basically taking out withdrawals, okay? And that means if you don't have a calcium-rich diet in your early adult years, you start to lose bone. So we want to do the best, we want to really make an effort to build as much bone as we can in our teen years. Okay, so to assemble these, what we're going to do is we're going to layer um, pepperonis in a half circle on each of these. Then we're going to add our filling on top. Then we're going to add another layer of pepperonis. Okay. okay, so you guys have at it. Okay, so I'm going to just dollop this on top. And then you can, oops, put that back on. If you like a lot of pepperoni um, in your calzone, feel free to load it up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to close this up and pinch the seams together so it's a nice little pocket envelope full of good, delicious food on the inside, and we're going to bake them off. All right, I'm going to just tuck that in a little bit. What I'm going to do, this is how you make a calzone. We're going to fold this over, like so, and try to keep everything on the inside. I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm pinching these together, but I'm rolling them at the same time. So this is going to keep everything inside the calzone. The most important thing is we want to make sure we are creating closure and a pocket for all this pepperoni and um, cheese on the inside. So I can see a little gap here. If we have gaps, we're going to have air escaping and things on the inside can get dried out. Okay, here, let me help you. No, that's okay. So that's why, you know, we really want to make our dough um, really stretchy. You see how I pull it out like that and then pull it over? We're going to just pop these on like so and put them in the oven. These will require about 30 minutes to bake. They are going to be absolutely gorgeous when they come out. 
All right, our pepperoni calzone has been baking in the oven for about 30 minutes, and we are just dying to pull it out and see what it looks like. You guys ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right, let's do it. Look at that. Ooh. How about that? That's, that beats any uh, pizza parlor, huh? Calzone. Let's see. Now, we have one here that's a little gappy, right? Yes, ma'am. Whose is that? That's mine. That's Blake's. Okay. Now, Blake, this is what happens. Sometimes when you cook, things just, they don't turn out perfectly, but that's, that's okay. Shall we dig in? Shall we cut them? Oh, okay. He wants his own plate. You can eat these like a sandwich. Um, you can dip them in spaghetti sauce. We actually have a recipe for spaghetti sauce, homemade spaghetti sauce on the website, which is, you know, wonderful if you dip this in the tomato sauce. But they are pretty hot. I don't know. Are you guys ready to try them? Take a bite? Maybe yes, off of the edge? I don't want you to burn your mouths. Go ahead. See how they do. Those look incredible. These guys have been waiting for these pepperoni calzones all day. Very good. Amazing. Amazing. As good as a pizza parlor or better? Better. Ah. To learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to AdvantageForParents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Teens. I'm Kate Wright and I have two special guests with me today. I've got Avery and Cole, um, two local quarterbacks from their football teams. And if you're wondering, okay, why do I have two football players in the kitchen with me? It's because we've actually had a lot of parents contact us after we filmed Kate's Kitchen with Kids who said, you know, it's too, really cool that y'all have a cooking show for kids, but what about teen athletes? You know, my son or daughter, you know, plays a sport and we need to know what, how to eat healthy. So I actually brought in award-winning nutritionist, Jill Castle, to help us create all kinds of awesome recipes. And what we learned about um, teen athletes and nutrition is basically what they're eating is what everybody should be eating. So this is not just a recipe for teen athletes. This is a great, healthy recipe for everybody. So do y'all want to know what we're making I today? Love to. Yes. Y'all hungry? Yes, oh, Mary. <laughs> We're actually going to make what's called just a cheesy omelet. It is the easiest, quickest, healthiest recipe you can throw together. Basically what you want to do before you start mixing everything is get your skillets um, nice and hot. And what you want to use is a smaller skillet to kind of help form the omelet. So if y'all want to each grab your skillet and hop over here. So with an omelet I've learned, now this one, if you want to push it down I'd say medium low. It's each of you guys grab an egg, just smash it on the corner, toss it in the bowl. However, it's easier for you. And you know what? If you get shells in there, no big deal. Go ahead and knock out the second one. Y'all are doing good with those eggs. Now we're going to add a tablespoon of water. Do either one of you guys know why we add a little bit of water to your egg? No, no. It's actually what makes it fluffy. Oh. Isn't that cool? Who would have thought a little simple uh, ingredient like that? No, no. So each of you guys just scoop out a tablespoon, just one giant spoonful of water, toss it in with your egg. There you go. And coal. Okay, so grab your fork and just whisk it all together quickly, kind of get it all nice and fluffy. Okay, you can put some muscle into it and just pew, 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 pew. There you go. So if, if we wanted to add you know, a little something else in there besides just egg and cheese, would we, be, would we be allowed to do that? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Absolutely. If you have like a red bell pepper lying oh. around or mushrooms or tomatoes or onions, by all means, if you have any vegetables, throw them in. The reason we're making this really simple today because everybody usually has eggs and cheese lying around the house. So I just want you guys to know that you can make a simple omelet with just two ingredients and it's a great, awesome breakfast, snack, or after sport meal. Okay. All right. Let's see if our... Our skillets are doing over here. So the next thing you can do is grab the cooking spray. Definitely don't leave out the cooking spray or else your egg will stick like glue to the pan. I actually made that mistake one time and I was like, oh no. So put a, I'll do the first one so you can kind of see. I mean, I have to do a pretty, pretty good amount and kind of make sure you get the edges too. So go ahead and throw your eggs in. Yay. 
So what you want to do is let it sit for like 30 seconds or maybe a minute. And in a minute, I'll show you, because remember, you're not going to scramble it or mix it up. This is going to kind of cook, you know, where it is. But what you want to do is lift it up and kind of roll. You see I'm kind of rolling it around? Yeah. Because um, you want to make sure that the runny part kind of gets to the outside. So if you want to do that, Cole, to yours, just lift it up and kind of just circle it around. There you go. All right, now you can set it back down and then give it like, I say like probably every 30 seconds, do kind of like a, a goo test is what I call it. If it's wow. gooey, just keep lifting it, kind of circle it around. See, it's still gooey. You can go ahead and... There you go. Now you can set it on down. So I just keep doing that over and over and then once there's no runny stuff moving around, then you know your, your egg is set. Does that make sense? Yeah. So once it's pretty set to the consistency that you like it, that's when you want to add your cheese. So Avery, if you want to go ahead and grab your cheese, just, just sprinkle it along the top. Okay. So this, I've turned, it takes me a little bit of practice. If, um, I'm going to let you step in here and do this. Now all you want to do is just kind of lift up the omelet on one end and then just fold it over. So then you got to get kind of done. On, there you go. And then just flip. There you go. Oh, no, no, it's all good. <laughs> and sometimes you can tweak it. You can kind of push it. But the good thing is, you guys, there you go. Kind of manipulate. Hey, much. I did this a hundred times before getting it right. There you go. Perfect. But you know what? If it comes out funky, it all tastes the same. True. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be pretty. So now, Avery, why don't you flip your and flip it over? I flip usually give mine one more flip on the other side just to make sure everything's cooked through. And just flip it like a. There you go. Oh, Ooh, yeah. that's looking that good. So good. Ooh, that is nice. Grab your skillet. All right. Here we go. And then just slide them onto the plate. Ooh, those look good. Very good. All right. All right, guys, ready to take a taste? Yes, I am. All right, let's see how they came out. I'm going to share this one with you, All Avery. Right. Mm. <laughs> that's good. That's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. mm. Pretty good. <laughs> so that's how you make a healthy, high-protein breakfast. To learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to AdvantageForParents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com. Welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Teens. I'm Jill Castle, a registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, and I am here with Blake and Blair, and we are making a veggie shrimp stir fry. So we have our frozen shrimp that has been defrosted. We have some pea pods, some carrots, some yellow pepper, and I'm going to have Blair chop up the yellow pepper. And Blake, I'm going to have you finish chopping the onions and we're going to get going. The great thing about shrimp stir fry is that uh, you, it's so fast. Of course, there's a little more time that goes into prepping, but we have shredded carrots. You can buy these already ready to go. We have these um, little pea pods, and they are washed and ready to go. The shrimp, we just had to defrost. We're chopping up a pepper and some onions, and we're going to stir fry it all together, and it'll come together really fast. Now, what we're using for our flavorings is a little bit of olive oil, some soy sauce, garlic, and ginger. And I'm going to turn on the stove and just pour in the oil and the soy sauce and get that heated up. Because this, we don't have to chop this small, but we're going to pop this in and you watch, it's going to go, woo! And throw those in. Okay, so we are cooking these up. We don't have to cook these for too long, but we want to get the bitter, hot, spiciness out of the onion. We're going to let that cook a little bit. We're going to add our garlic and let that cook for a minute. And garlic also gives us a lot of flavor. You okay. can go ahead and add that. Okay. Sure. And get that stirring around. Just don't burn yourself. Okay. The garlic will cook about a minute. If we cook it longer than a minute, 
uh, we have a good chance of burning it and that's never, that doesn't taste any good. And you'll see we have lots of colors and that always means what? When you see lots of color in your vegetables. Uh, it's more beautiful. It's more beautiful and it means <laughs> there is more <laughs> nutrition. So we're going to dump in those carrots. We are going to pop in these green Alrighty. pea pods. You're going to keep on stirring. We'll get those yellow uh, peppers in. It smells so good. I know, it does smell good. Let's pop those in. <clears throat> All right. So we want our vegetables to cook a little bit, but we don't want them to be too soft. We want to have a crunch to our vegetables. But sometimes it depends on the size of your wok. Uh, if you have a really large wok, you walk you can put all of the vegetables and the shrimp in together <clears throat> sometimes you have to remove some of the vegetables in order to cook the shrimp and then bring them all back together again at the end it really depends on the size of your wok when you cook vegetables there's a point at which the color becomes really bright and then they we, when you get past that point the color becomes dark and almost dull we don't want our vegetables become dark and dull we want them to be bright and crispy and so that's the point at which we're going to add the shrimp and you, you can see that our vegetables are quite colorful so we're going to add that shrimp you're going to keep on stirring keep on stirring we want that shrimp to turn pink okay it starts out raw almost a grayish color but we want it to turn a pinkish white-ish color and that's how we know it's done so it will take time you'll have to get that down in there okay. by the Get that shrimp down by the, the hot source there. And we're going to toss in this ginger as well, and that will just give everything more flavor. Now, did you know, does your mom cook at home quite yes, a bit? Yes, she does. Okay, all she, the time. she cooks all the time. That's actually um, almost unusual and uncommon in this day and age. A lot of parents don't cook that much anymore, a lot of parents don't know how to cook. Uh, they did a recent poll where they showed 33% of parents uh, know how to cook, but they don't take the time to teach their kids how to cook. Now, has your mom been showing you how to cook? Yes, yeah, she's been making me come down and cook some meals with her, so. <laughs> good, good. And what do you, I mean, what do you think the benefit of knowing how to cook? Is. I mean, just being able to like, cook for yourself, like my brother's going out to college soon, so hopefully he'll be able to cook some meals for himself. <laughs> yeah, because what happens if you can't cook for yourself? You, gotta you eat out. You got to buy food. Processed yes. food. Processed food. That's right. You buy the quick processed food. And what does that do to your wallet? Uh, it'll be empty. It'll be empty. <laughs> so it is really, it's a life skill to know how to cook. And not enough teens really do know how to cook anymore. So we've, it's a real priority to know and to have confidence. And I can tell you, I've had a couple of hours with you. You already have a confidence with cooking. But your brother here, Blake, <laughs> he started this morning. He didn't have any confidence. And now he is the one who's taken over every meal. I mean, he really has this newfound confidence that you get. The more you cook, the more confident you are. And the great thing about cooking is you really can't ruin something that you cook. Cooking is very free-flowing, and you might decide you cook something you don't like it, but cooking's very forgiving. Baking, on the other hand, that's a science. That's very precise, where you really have to measure things out and follow the recipe and the order of ingredients exactly. But with cooking, there's a lot more freedom and flexibility. Up with this one, and you hold that. Oopsie. Mm. Looking good. To learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to advantageforparents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com. Welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Kids. I'm Kate Wright. And I'm Haley Price. Today we're making one of my favorite desserts. It's actually baked apples with cinnamon and vanilla ice cream on the side. Deliciousness. And I actually, I was in Germany. My husband's from Germany and um, my daughter had just been born and I was just craving something sweet but kind of healthy. So this is something I just kind of threw together and it just came out 
perfect. So basically all you have to do is just get a handful of apples, just cut them in half, and then take out the cores so you kind of have like a little slivet so you can put all the ingredients in there. And then all you have to do is just take a little bit of butter, not too much. Just plop it on top, and then you'll take a little bit of brown sugar, sprinkle it to kind of cover everything. Ooh, yummy. And then you take some cinnamon, sprinkle that on top, and then you bake them. I usually do like 375 or 400 um, for about 20 minutes, maybe 30, just once they're soft um, and, you know, just easy to cut with a fork, you know they're ready to go. Since we're busy, Haley, and we don't have time to do this on our own, we need some help. I think we need a couple of kids in the kitchen! All right! Come on in, guys! Me? Run, 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 run! All right, we're making one of mommy's favorites, oh, yeah, baked apples. Okay, plop that on top, Conley. Okay, so grab a little bit of brown sugar, and like sprinkle it on top. Gently sprinkle the cinnamon on there. Now we're gonna pop these in the oven so that when they come out, they're gonna be all soft and yummy yeah. and gooey and warm. So I'm gonna put these in for probably like at least 20 or 30 minutes. I'll okay. check them in a little bit, just make sure they're nice and soft. Possibly, we'll see. Let's get them in the oven. Let me check the apples, see how they're doing. Why did she say that? Ooh, hot. Apple's nice. Oh, look at that. Those look delicious. Oh, my. I like dessert when it's just like warm and it just feels Ooh, it's warm. See the, how's that? And then the ice cream will melt a little bit. Whoopsie. Because yeah, it's right on the hot, hot apples. I love, I don't know about you, but this is my favorite. I mean, whether it's cobbler and ice cream oh, or brownies oh. and ice cream, I just love the hot and cold combination. Let's have a taste. Yeah, trying to mix yeah. it together. Do half apple, half ice cream like that. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That almost does taste like an apple mm. pie. To learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to AdvantageForParents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Kids. I'm Kate Wright. I'm Haley Price. Today we're doing an awesome side dish called roasted tomatoes with pesto. Oh, this is so delicious. Sounds like we're going to be in Tuscany or something. <laughs> so delicious in Italian. So how, what exactly do we do here? You just, you actually, it's just some very basic, simple ingredients. You obviously need some tomatoes. Okay. Some olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, oregano, pesto that you can buy at your local grocery store, and some par Parmesan cheese. That's all you need. Perfect. And you need a little bit of help in the kitchen. I think we might need a couple of kids in the kitchen. We're going to cut these tomatoes into big chunks. I'll kind of start. You see how thick these are? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're big, chunky pieces of tomatoes. So you, every time you cut one, you're going to place it over here on the cookie sheet. And then Macklin is going to top it off with all the fun stuff, OK? So you can get going so on these we're tomatoes. Gonna well, I'm actually going to drizzle, drizzle it with olive oil, and then you're going to put some of this on there. That's salt and pepper. And then you're going to put some of this on there. Side to side, it'll okay. be a little bit easier. Ooh. And parents, when your kids get down to the last part, it's good for you to jump in and help out, just so you don't get any fingers caught in there. So we down with tomato number one. So what you're going to do is we have the oven on 425. You're going to put the tomatoes in like they are for 10 minutes. Then you're going to take them out and add the pesto and the parmesan. There we go. And then you're going to put them back in for seven minutes. So make sure you don't put everything on from the very beginning. Just put them on like they are. Yeah. All right, you guys are rocking it. That's tough. those. Well oh. done. Don't those look lovely? Here they go. OK. 10 minutes, and you guys will be back in. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the pesto on each tomato. So let's all just use this one as an example. Be real careful you don't touch the pan. And then you spread it on there like that. Okay. And then the other guy is going to take some Parmesan. Careful, it's really hot. And sprinkle a good amount of Parmesan on top. High five! We okay. Good, good job, guys. Woo! Good all work. Right. All right. High five. We done. Well done. Well, these are going to go back in the oven for seven to ten minutes. Hot coming through. Watch out. Okay. So now, don't touch whatever you do. Just scoop these little suckers up. You liked it enough to want more, I see. 
So we gotta get All a thumbs right. up, thumbs down. Uh, Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> to learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to AdvantageForParents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Kate's Kitchen with Teens. I'm Kate Wright and I've got today with me two helping hands here. We've got Cole and Avery. So what we've put together today is what's called Turkey Avocado Delight. Super simple sandwiches that have all the right ingredients for a healthy meal, okay? So basically what's in this is um, whole grain bread. Um, you got some fresh deli or fresh turkey from your local deli. Um, some carrots, some lettuce, and actually you could use just um, avocado for this, but we also have a recipe that's a homemade guacamole. And so what I learned one time when I made this homemade guacamole is this is a fabulous spread, a great replacement instead of, instead of mayonnaise. So we're going to use um, the guacamole dip, the homemade guacamole that you guys actually helped yeah. us make. So if you want to learn how to make the guacamole dip, just click over to the guacamole recipe and you can learn how to make that too. So question guys, are you guys competitive? Uh, you can yeah. probably say that. <laughs> you don't like to lose, right? Okay, so we're going to have a little fun here with this recipe. Since this recipe is so fast, I want to see which one of you can make this the quickest. So we're going to have a little competition here, okay? So how long do you think it would take Avery to throw together this mm. sandwich? I'd say 10, 15 seconds. 10, 15 seconds. Okay, cool. I'd say about 8 seconds. 8 seconds. Ooh, Ooh. already can <laughs> It's on. Okay, so I... And the official timekeeper, the Olympic uh, timekeeper here. So when I say go, you got to add your guacamole spread, lettuce, carrots, meat, finish your sandwich, and then we're done. Okay, ready, set, go. There we go. Some some lettuce on here. Maybe some carrots, and maybe I'm just going to slap it down. Ugh. Done. Boom. Thirteen seconds, baby. Ugh. Dang it. Right. 15 seconds, baby. Ooh. Woo! I mean, who time. can't put together? A, so when people say, oh, healthy eating takes too much time. I don't have time to cook healthy. These boys, teenage, high school, busy boys made these sandwiches in 13 and 15 seconds. All right? So that is avocado turkey delight sandwiches. Lunch or dinner the healthy way. To learn more about Kate's Kitchen, go to AdvantageForParents.com. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to SouthwesternAdvantage.com. AdvantageForParents.com is the only parenting website in the world with hundreds of articles written by doctors and professionals, as well as video interviews with parenting experts, role-playing and educational videos, and our very own groundbreaking cooking show, Kate's Kitchen with Kids. Kate's Kitchen has over 100 recipes teaching kids and teenagers how to be confident in the kitchen. Our team of experts include money expert and best-selling author Dave Ramsey and his daughter Rachel Cruz, author and parenting coach Kate Wright, New York Times best-selling author Rory Vaden, child psychologist Dr. Patricia Nan Anderson, award-winning pediatric nutritionist Jill Castle, licensed clinical social worker and parenting coach Katie Malinsky, and the former nutritionist for NBC's hit TV show The Biggest Loser, Cheryl Forberg. Advantage for Parents addresses important parenting topics from toddlers to teenagers and even has coaching on life topics such as money management, diet and health, career development and marriage just for you. Think you already have all the answers to parenting? Well, take our unique parenting quizzes and find out. Advantage for Parents. Real help for the most important job in the world. To learn more about Southwestern Advantage, go to southwesternadvantage.com.